truth of the matter is that Jesus himself found himself in a scenario just like this. See, in John the 8th chapter, verses 1 through 11, we see this type of scenario. It was in biblical times as opposed to modern day. That's the thing about life time change and the people change but the scenarios they stay the same see on the second verse of the 8th chapter Jesus at dawn appeared again in the temple courts where all the people were gathered around him and he set them down and he was prepared to teach them just like this and then all of a sudden the teachers of the law came because they caught a woman in adultery they literally caught her in the act of adultery so they brought her to Jesus to stand before him they said Jesus teach her this 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 woman, she was caught in the act of adultery. Verse 5 says, in the, in the law of Moses, it commands us that we should stone this type of chick. We should get rid of her. But Jesus, what do you say? Verse 6 says they were using this question to trap him up in order to have a basis of accusing him. Because what you got to understand is that they were trying to trip Jesus up because the law required in Leviticus 20 and 10 and Deuteronomy 22 and 22 that she be stoned or put to death. Interesting. She was caught in adultery. But they only brought one of her. The partner, the person that was caught with her, he was gone. But she had to be brought to Jesus. They try to trip him up and say, Jesus, what do we do with her? Because the law says that we should stone her. The law says that she needs to die because the wages of sin is death. And the penalty of your actions are death, Jesus. What do you say about this? The leaders were trying to use this woman. They were trying to use this woman as a trap so that they could trick Jesus. They said to Jesus, uh, so that if Jesus said that she should be stoned, then they would accuse him of violating Moses' law if he let her off. But if he urged to execute her, then, then they would report Jesus to the Romans who did not permit the Jews to carry out their own executions. So it was like a catch-22. She's caught in adultery. She's, she's, she's not even probably dressed. And they bring her out to the church. And they lay her right in the feet of Jesus in the midst of the church while everyone is watching and everyone is looking and everyone is paying attention. And then they try to trap Jesus and trick Jesus by saying, what would you do if you found this woman that was caught in this scenario and this situation? If you say stone her, then we, if you say don't stone her, then we accuse you of the law of Moses. If you say stone her, then we accuse you for execution your own law let's see what Jesus does when he's placed in this scenario different day different people same scenario so now they're in the temple all eyes are on Jesus Everybody in the crowd is looking, trying to see what is Jesus going to do to this woman. 
Will he execute judgment on her for her sins and have her stoned? What is he going to do? They freeze and they pause to see because they're curious because the reality about it is anytime you have sex outside of the covenant of marriage, it leaves you open and exposed and vulnerable. Anytime you have sex outside of the marriage bed, it puts you in a situation where you have to face some consequences for your actions. Anytime you have sex outside the marriage bed, it puts you in a compromising situation. And the thing about marriage, the covenant of marriage, is marriage is supposed to protect you from being vulnerable to outside compromising situations. Suppose. Because when marriage in its proper context is taken properly, it covers you. But when people bring things to their marriage bed that doesn't supposed to be there, then it does not cover you. It exposes you. It makes you vulnerable and open to other people and what they brought in the bed with them. And so, hence, when the marriage bed is violated and the covenant is broken, it opens you up for exposure to be able to get in, involved in things that you should never be involved in because you should be covered and protected. And even when you're married and you bring things in your bed that does not belong to you, it leaves you open and it leaves you exposed when marriage is meant to cover you. Had these two people been married, they couldn't even come in their room because the marriage bed was sacred. Had these two people been married, they would have never had to bring them to Jesus and see what he would do because that law would not have even qualified for their life. It would have been disqualified because they would have been covered. But anytime you do something in the marriage bed that's outside the covenant of marriage, it always puts you in a situation where you got to come before Jesus to see what he's going to do. See, the covenant of marriage gives you certain rights and privileges that prevent certain things from happening to you. That's why it's important to exercise your sexual liberties and freedom within the context of the marriage bed because it gives you rights and protections and coverings. But when you are not in a marriage bed relationship, it exposes you and puts you in a vulnerable place and it puts you in a place where things attach to your life that's not supposed to be attached to your life and every time you get in the bed with somebody else that's not attached to your life and you get up from them and you get in the bed again every single time you do it you bring something else with you to the bed that doesn't belong in your bed and we don't realize it at that moment because we're just having fun. But every person that you sleep with, every person that you sleep with, do you leave a piece of yourself with them? Every person that you sleep with, you leave a piece of yourself with them. And many of us that are sitting here right now got our pieces scattered all over the place. And we trying to pull ourselves together. But Joe got a piece. Denise got a piece. Susie got a piece. Jimmy got a piece. Everybody got a piece of you and the pieces of you are broken and now it's time to be in the marriage bed but you got all this stuff inside of your bed with you. All this stuff stacked up, piled up inside of the bed with you. All of these broken pieces and all of these things inside of the bed with you because marriage, being in the marriage bed without the covering of marriage leaves you uncovered and God wants to help you to pick up the pieces of your life again. God wants to help you to restore the pieces in your life again because we've got too many broken people with too many broken pieces pieces too many broken pieces and too many broken people and too many people that are broken because we've been in the bed with people that didn't fix us or protect us but they gave us a fix and the fix that they gave us really broke us and violated us greater than we're willing to admit so yes we come to church and we sit in the temple but we gotta bring it before Jesus to say God what will you do with my broken pieces what will 
will you do with my broken pieces? Because every time I get in the marriage bed with somebody that is not my mate, I break myself all over again and I'm broken all over again and I expose myself all over again to more I'll be in a vulnerable to more and more and more and more and more and more what type of insecurities am I trying to cover up what types of things am I trying to solve in my life and in my mind that cause me to keep on diminishing who I am and finding myself in less and less and less of a situation because I don't understand my value and I don't understand my worth and I don't understand that every time I get in the marriage bed with someone that is not my spouse it will never cover me it will always expose me it will always break me it will always leave me wanting more and more and more and more it will never fix me it will never heal me it will never hurt me it just breaks me and leaves me empty and leaves me violated and leaves me needing to be restored I need Jesus and you can't put makeup on on top of that type of pain you can't dress up that type of stuff and act like everything's okay because every time you get in the marriage bed and get out the marriage bed with somebody that's not your spouse you leave a piece of yourself 